Um, in this session, the panelists will share about their experiences um, and what they find engaging and meaningful in their respective workplaces. And in turn, we hope you're able to get some tips and tricks on managing and engaging an, a multi-generational team um, in this hybrid environment to help you increase your retention rate. Um, this session will be moderated by our facilitator, Mary Kay Delvo. Uh, Mary Kay uh, is the owner of Inspiring Sites, a coaching and leadership development farm. Um, has over 30 years of experience in mul multiple sectors, including nonprofits, associations, small businesses, social services, county and state government, post-secondary and K through 12 education, advocacy and grassroots uh, and community engagement. Um, with her vast professional experience and certifications, uh, we believe Mary Kay, uh, together with the panelists, will provide subject matter experts on this conversation today. Um, so we will have um, a Q&A session at the end of the conversation that Mary Kay has uh, with the panelists. And then from there, the audience will have an opportunity to submit their questions either to me directly or in the chat, uh, which then we'll respond to after the conversation. Um, Mary Kay, I'll have you take it away from here. All right, thank you, Nancy. And thank you all for being here. It looks like we have a pretty good showing. So um, we're gonna get started because I know this panel has a lot to offer you. So uh, we're going to start out with just introductions. And as part of your introduction, if you could share your name, your role, and then a little bit about the stage of work that you're in to give our, our audience members uh, some context. And why don't we start with you, Ashley? Uh, now thank you. Awesome. Sorry, I was listening with a headphone here. Um, but I am Ashley House Mishki, and I work um, at a company called Acario. I am a manager of the enterprise services team. So we focus on internal project management, uh, program management, um, and strategic initiatives. Um, and I am about 10 years into my career. So just moving away from that independent role into more of that um, people management. Thank you, Ashley. We look forward to hearing more about that. Um, Heidi, how about you? Sure. I'm Heidi Anderson. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am at Shutterfly today. I am the marketing content and technology transformation manager. And I am responsible for helping us reduce our workload and increase our capacity in order to take on new things in marketing like personalization and atomization and things like that, which all has all sorts of technology behind it. So I work with a lot of engineers, um, UX folks and creative and other marketing folks. I am in the later stage of my career and uh, have, have uh, made many different career paths through, uh, followed many different career paths throughout my career and uh, landed back in technology where, where I love to be. Thank you, Heidi. In, uh, excited to have your perspective as well. Uh, let's go Cy next and then we'll have John bring up the rear and then we'll uh, move into some questions. Yeah, so I'm Sai. Um, I'm currently wrapping up my education at the University of Minnesota, uh, with studying computer science and mathematics. Um, so I'm on the complete other end of the spectrum from Heidi. Uh, I've barely started out uh, my career. And so uh, right now I'm working as a junior software developer intern at uh, Best Buy Health, uh, working for their uh, active aging team. Um, so I, I create um, solutions for their customer care centers and so forth. And don't underestimate this guy. He may be, he may be new to the profession, but he's gonna, he has a lot of wisdom to share with you today. John, welcome. Uh, 
Yeah, hi, and uh, John Rouse. So I'm an IT manager at Excel Energy within our end user services area. Um, and so uh, we focus on uh, many different areas within you know, supporting our end users from you know, collaboration spaces, to print and scanning services, um, uh, executive support. We have uh, uh, specific support, uh, support for some of our energy traders that trade energy um, like a stock market. So uh, quite a wide variety of, of areas that fall within my uh, management scope. Um, I guess I would uh, say I'm probably uh, middle of my career. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I started in, uh, at a power plant as an intern, um, kind of been with the Excel energy throughout my entire career. And then I've moved into the, uh, management space about, uh, five years ago. Um, so probably uh, mid career is what I would call that. So. Okay. So one of the questions I'm sure is on the minds of our audience members and that I hear a lot is what do people at certain stages want? both from a hiring perspective as from a retention perspective. So based on your professional and life stage, could you describe for us one pet peeve and one bright spot of working in a hybrid remote work environment? Anyone interested in starting us off? Yeah, sure, I can. John. I, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. Um, yeah, so I would say, you know, probably uh, one of the, the pet peeves of working in a remote hybrid type environment is um, just losing that um, camaraderie that you kind of gain in the hallways, the networking when you're inside the, the office space. Um, typically at Excel Energy prior to the pandemic, we were 100% in the office, so uh, really didn't have a, a whole lot of flexible opportunities. Um, and so over the past couple of years, um, you know, that's probably been the biggest thing that that I've uh, missed is just, you know, the networking, running into people in the halls that you might not have meetings with and uh, collaborate with uh, on a routine basis. And I guess one of the, the positive things is um, uh, not having a, com a commute. So that's always nice being able to just uh, hop out hop up in the morning, hop on the, the computer. And at my stage in my career, kind of being in, in the middle of it, and I do have some children, um, you know, it helps me with being able to, you know, get them out to the school bus, um, come back, hop on the computer, and then be home um, when they get home from school. So. All right. And Heidi, I think you are ready to go next. No problem. Yeah, so I uh, didn't grow up in Minnesota. And so coming here, I noticed that uh, the friends that I took away from work were, were always people I met at work. And so in the last two years, I haven't necessarily gained any new friendships um, that I can, you know, go to coffee with on a regular basis and, and hang out with. So I really do miss that part of it. Um, but what I, you know, feel is a bright spot, at least at my company, is um, our CEO talks to us twice a week via a meeting that she records for us. So if you miss it, you can watch it again. Um, she just tells us about everything that's going on in the organization uh, at that moment. So it's twice a week. So there's lots of things going on. And then also she allows us to ask questions, any questions. Um, so it can be anything from when are we moving back to the office? Um, what hap what's happening with our building because we're tearing one of them down um, to, you know, like, when is my bonus going to get paid out? You know, so they're, you know, some of the questions are pretty rough, but they always answer them. Uh, so it's just really wonderful to have that communication with them. Wow. It, it sounds like that's been an important part of making this workable for you. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that transfers down to all the different levels of management. So my manager is also really um, transparent and communicative with us uh, uh, throughout throughout the week about everything we're doing. We can ask her anything. Um, they'll always give us the honest answer, even if it's a tough one. If they can't tell us, they'll say, you know what, we're working on it. We just can't tell you yet. So that's that's also really nice to know that they're just not hiding information. Nice. Uh, what about you, um, Ashley? Yeah, I would say um, one pet peeve of mine is just with the amount of work that we're constantly trying to do, um, kind of echoing what John was saying is you you lose out on the ability to just walk over to a coworker and ask a simple question. 
Um, and we, you know, the danger of 100% uh, remote work is you run the risk of, you know, having too many meetings on a calendar. So it's finding a healthy balance in that. Um, but that kind of ties into something that I've uh, kind of enjoyed through this hybrid experience. And it's, uh, there's that added challenge of how to create connections with coworkers. Um, you know, before you could see them face to face, you could walk over to their desk, but now it's finding new ways to communicate and engage um, not only with your peers, but um, new employees and even those higher up. Um, and I think it really, um, it, it challenges us to step outside of our comfort zones. And I always appreciate that opportunity. I have a feeling we're going to hear more about challenge and what role that plays for you as we continue to talk here today. Um, thank you, Ashley. Sai, pet peeve and bright spot about a hybrid work environment. Yeah, I think um, I think Ashley and John sort of hit the nail on the spot right there. Um, you know, for me, uh, I've been doing a lot of internships so far, and each time it's with a different company where you have to restart over and learn everything new with the team. Um, and so I have a lot of experience as like, you know, someone new coming to the team and the the disconnect is definitely felt, you know, when you join a team, there's a at least a month or two where you're really just asking questions about the business overview, the technical overview, how does it all work? And then you're just spending time in knowledge transfers and stuff like that. But um, especially with the online environment, it's a little bit more difficult um, to ask the questions that you need because you sort of have to find the time between meetings for the people who actually have the answers. And so that's definitely one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, and then uh, one of the best bright spots that I've definitely noticed um, is again, commuting. Um, so I'm a student right now. And for me to, you know, be able to go to class at 1115, finish work uh, or finish class by 2.15 and then join, um, you know, and start working by 2.30. That's a big benefit for me because otherwise, if I were to work in a physical building, I'd have to drive 15 minutes, then walk 15 minutes to my desk and then set up. And then, uh, you know, you get asked questions by your boss or the peer person sitting next to you. So there's a lot of setup required for, um, you know, going to a physical building. So Sounds like you get you gain some time when you can um, skip the commute and some other time back for yourself. So now I'm I'm going to ask you to imagine for a moment you no longer have a job and you have to go out and find a new one. What are you looking for when assessing employers and um, and, and work environments related to hybrid? What are the things that are helping that you're looking for to help you make your decisions about whether or not you would work in um, in that company now that you're unemployed? I can start uh, with this one, Mary. Okay. Um, so for me, if I were to start looking for a new role at this point, um, that level of work-life balance that um, hybrid work has allowed us, like John has said, the lack of commute um, and being able to focus more of our time and energy outside of our job, um, that some, is something that's absolutely essential to me. Um, but on top of that, um, it's the company culture. Are they investing time and energy into their employees just as much as they're expecting us to give into them? Do they want us to learn and grow and develop um, as the company moves on? Um, on? Is there that opportunity to really grow within your role and take on that responsibility? And I think those are all things that are kind of critical when I'm looking at my next role. Okay, so culture and work-life balance is what I heard from you. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else ready to have to imagine you're unemployed right now and <laughs> and share what you're looking for? Yeah, I can go ahead and you know. Um, you know, I, I would say with the pandemic, you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, being able to work hybrid remote um, on occasion, you know, like I said, prior to the pandemic, Excel Energy didn't offer any of those opportunities uh, for the most part. So if I was, you know, uh, looking for a, a different job, that would be one of the key things. Um, I do think there's something to be said about, uh, you know, being able to, to work at home on occasion, you know, not have to commute, 
um, you can definitely um, be more productive. Sometimes that is a, a negative thing because uh, it's sometimes difficult to separate the, the work from life as far as because your computer is always up, it's always running. Um, and then some of the other things I would look for, you know, are, you know, the tools that the company has for remote work. Um, you know, do they provide me um, you know, maybe some monitors or, or the capabilities for me to work at home as I would in the office? Or is that something that I would have to go out and, and procure on my own um, as far as just the connectivity options that they have there as well would be, you know, just to make sure that I could be as productive at, at home as I, at, you know, in the office would be some of the key things. Okay. I can go next. I, I, um, I really like what Shutterfly is doing with their remote or hybrid experience. They're calling it presence with a purpose. And that really uh, says a lot to the culture that I would love to be a part of. So it's not just uh, when I see job descriptions, sometimes I see them say like, two days in the office, three days remote, and then the next week, maybe three days in the office, two days remote. And I really want it to be something that like really makes sense. So um, who's going to be in the office with me? Am I even going to be able to collaborate with somebody else that I need to on the days that I'm there if we're each choosing different days? So just being in the office to keep the office building doesn't make sense to me, but really having it be about true collaboration and when it makes sense and really trusting your employees to understand when that does make sense. We, I mean, I truly believe that being in the office to have, you know, a, a whiteboarding session or a meeting where you're having, you know, deep conversation about, you know, a future uh, process or something like that is really valuable. And I'm very willing to go into the office for that. But if I'm just documenting something on my own and just heads down, getting some work done, I hope that they trust that I'm going to do that. And I can definitely do that from home. So I shouldn't have to be in the office on a Monday, every Monday, just because they feel they need the lights on in the building. Um, and then uh, also I echo the technology piece as well. I uh, as well as the rest of the setup for my desk, I you know took this job and it was the first one within the remote uh, environment. And I was like, I don't have a desk and I prefer a sit stand desk and I can't afford one, or I mean, I suppose I could, but should I have to do that? And so my company was just like, hey, you can have all this equipment and you can have a desk and everything. But if I were to go somewhere else, now I'm like so used to this desk and can I get another one like it? Things like that would be really important to me. Interesting. And everybody needed a desk if you tried to order one when the pandemic first started as well as a monitor, right? So it's not like everyone had a, a nice setup at home for working there. So very valuable information. Sai, how about you? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I've uh, been in that situation uh, a few times because I have to go between internships. So um, one of the biggest pieces that I look for in any company or employer is their culture. You know, it, all, although we're online, it doesn't mean that there's a lack of culture between, um, you know, the teams. So uh, is it a culture of trust? Do they trust you enough that you're doing your job, that they're not micromanaging you? Is it a cult culture of um, patience? Are they patient enough for you to learn? while you're starting off, you know, it, it's just like, what, what steps do they go beyond what is expected of them to create culture? And that's, that's sort of what is, at least for me, the most important at my stage of my career. So that is a great um, segue to what I'm curious about. I've heard several of you talk about transparency. I've heard several of you talk about culture. And that you would look for that is how you answered this last question. You would look for that culture piece if you were looking for a job. How do you sniff that out while you're job hunting before you actually work there? What do you look for to assess from the outside if a company has that transparent and that good company culture? Yeah, I would say one of the things that, you know, I would be interested in looking at is, you know, the company, do they have, you know, their mission, their values, you know, stated on, you know, their, their websites. Um, you know, I think it's very important to, you know, not even maybe not even on, on their website, but just within the, the public forum is, you know, the, the mission, the values that that company stands for is that, you know, known to potential uh, candidates. 
And then also, you know, just using the network of people that you know, um, I think within, you know, the Minneapolis region, the, you know, IT industry is, you know, it seems like you, you tend to, to know a lot of people at, at different places, you know, whether or not it's connections with LinkedIn and then just trying to, you know, see if there's a contact or, or read reviews information on the company just to try to get some insight to that company and if at all possible, you know, trying to make a connection with someone who you might have within your network that is familiar with the place, currently works there or um, has worked there in the past. Thank you. So I hear that connection piece again, which you talked about in the beginning, John, about that's, that's one of the pet peeves of being hybrid um, is that removed opportunity for connection. But I hear you also using connection as a way to to really check jobs out, check out cultures. Ashley, what about you? Yeah, what you so kind of along, yeah. So kind of along what John said, like I think, um, you know, there's that level of transparency of, you know, what are current and past employees saying about the um, companies you're looking at? You know, like third party sites like Glassdoor are so valuable. And I love even just looking at, you know, things like salary transparency. Does it look like what people are reporting, you know, that the company is offering fair wages or above market wages? Um, and just kind of looking into your network to hear, you know, what are people saying about the companies you're looking at and how they fit into the industry? Um, so just kind of looking at that and also seeing what you can find out about the leaders of each company. Um, and, you know, are they creating that level of transparency with their employees where employees feel like they are well informed with um, the current and future state of the organization? Okay. And I heard you talk about you actually use technology to help assess companies. Right. Okay. Um, Heidi? Uh, I, I echo both of those things, but uh, another thing that I've done is requested to interview with somebody that would potentially be doing the job that I would be taking on. So a peer and really asking them, you know, like, does the, do you like the tools that you use on a daily basis? Or, you know, do you struggle to actually get your job done? Do you have enough resources to, you know, do the work that you need to do? You know, all that kind of stuff um, would also tell you a lot about the culture and, and how they run the business. And is that something that's easy to make happen? Getting those interviews before you work there? If you're already in the interview process, I suppose, yes. Um, but uh, if you're just trying to check out a company, I mean, obviously not, you, you would have to know who else would be in that role and LinkedIn is vast. So I'm sure it might be difficult to find those exact people. But, um, but yeah, I've definitely asked to be able to talk with other people on the team and it's always been okay. Okay, okay. What about you, Sai? How do you, um, how do you assess, identify that level of transparency before you work there? Yeah, so um, I have a, um, a you know, standard question that I ask at the end of every interview that I have. And it's, um, you know, what uh, is it, when is a time that, you know, your employer has made you feel valued as an employee? And, you know, usually those sort of situations, when they open up, it gives me a little bit more perspective about, you know, who their employer is, what their team is like a little bit. Um, and then past that, you know, there's a, a big, big emphasis on like Glassdoor and LinkedIn and online stuff. Because um, especially, you know, for someone like me starting off my career, I don't necessarily have a ton of time to, you know, comb through LinkedIn connections, like go first, second, third degree and scroll through like 500 people to find one person who works at that one company. Um, so I really do rely on, and I think a lot of the people in my, um, situation rely on instant access to reviews through like Glassdoor and stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, that's a big component for, uh, finding out the culture. Cause a lot of the times you'll find, um, the reviews are either good, very good, or they're very bad. And both of them teach you, uh, something. You know, so I, I think you can take a lot away from those reviews as well. Right. I love what you said, Sai, about instant access, because I love LinkedIn. I'm a big user of it. But 
man, I could spend a whole morning <laughs> searching my contacts to see who I know that's connected to whom. And um, well, it's a wonderful resource. It can be time consuming to use it to its fullest extent. So we're going to change gears just a little bit. How have companies um, in the recent year or two really elevated their DE&I efforts? How has that worked in tandem, in tandem with or disrupted the success of multi-generational teams and workplaces? Uh, I could probably start with this one. Um, All right. So I've uh, worked at, like I said, I've worked at a couple of companies and um, the the best ones, in my opinion, uh, which sort of nailed the diversity and, um, you know, the DNE objectives all had some sort of group set up for, um, you know, like culture based groups. So uh, I believe they were called like uh, employee resource groups or something like that. But it's basically okay. people like clubs within a company where you can, you know, whether you have camaraderie within your team or not, you can definitely have camaraderie within this group because you have similar interests, you know, um, like you either have Asian interest groups or you either have, you know, Christian interest groups. And there's, there's a wide variety of um, groups that can be formed. And it's definitely like a short shot way where you can find people similar in mindset to you. Um, you know, that, that also helps with diversity because you can have other people um, join and then learn about, you know, the different cultures and be educated about, um, you know, oh, this is what this festival is and this one culture, or this is what this stands for. So uh, I think that definitely helps um, boost the diversity um, within a workspace as well. Okay. And that touches on um, some of your earlier answers about even that desire for more camaraderie in the workplace. Absolutely. And that this this could fit sort of both of those objectives um, at once, potentially. Uh, I, I am going to ask, there's an audience question that really ties into this. So I'm going to also throw this question into the mix while we're talking about this. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on getting around the camaraderie issue with remote work? We've tried virtual game nights and virtual group activities, but it feels like they're just not cutting it. So if you have anything as we're, um, as we're talking about the DNI efforts and how are they aligning with supporting or detracting from the multi-generational work, how does the, how, how could this also support that D or that uh, camaraderie issue that our audience member is asking about? I'd love to start with that one. I think Shutterfly does a really great job with this. One, we don't have it at night. We have it during the day. You should be able to make time in your day um, to do work things and have camaraderie with your employees. It shouldn't be required to do it at night. Um, and uh, so we, we have um, a bunch of different hobby groups, like hundreds of different hobby groups to allow for everybody to feel really um, like they're included in the things that they care about. We have trivia night or trivia day, <laughs> trivia time. Um, and so I don't, I, I cannot do trivia. And so I don't feel welcome in that one at all, but there's also <laughs> like a gardening club and a cooking club and they have, you know, just whoever wants to set up time to talk about a recipe they just tried, or, you know, right now we're talking about planting seeds indoors and, and then there's an exercise club and a yoga club and the, anything you can imagine as it relates to any kind of hobby they have. And so it really allows and anyone can make a hobby group too. And so it really allows like everybody to feel included. And then it also happens during the workday. So you feel like it's not something that you have to do outside of work and it doesn't feel like you know, work in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that's really been successful with Shutterfly. I like your idea of it happens during the day that if, if, if our opportunity for engagement with our colleagues is removed because we have to work at home, that it's not being shifted to another burden on that work-life balance, that if you want to have relationships, you have to do it on your own time. So I, I really, I love that perspective. Um, Ashley and John, you have anything to add to these questions? Yeah, so I kind of two things. So kind of echoing 
um, what Heidi was saying, um, you know, at Acario, we also try to do activities um, throughout the week, typically during work hours. Um, but I think another thing that we do that adds another layer is um, we're a Slack company and the number of channels that you can talk about any subject under the sun, anything from the latest episode of The Bachelor to if you're really into board games, um, there's, you know, there's that um, invitation to all to talk about whatever you're passionate about. Um, and I think that that uh, helps you find people with similar interests um, that maybe you, something you maybe wouldn't have found even just with face-to-face -face conversations because right. now you can kind of just search for it. Um, and then a little bit to touch on the DEI um, that Sai mm -hmm. was talking about. Um, I think a rising trend I've seen across a lot of different companies, but something that I think even um, we've taken to heart is that um, it can't just be a statement on a website. It really has to go a level deeper and really building it into the framework of how you do business. Um, so seeing that shift towards really infusing DE and I from and like from all points of the business, um, mm -hmm. it's like kind of a refreshing spin that you know people are starting to say this isn't just an add-on. This is really something that is a core part of how we do business. I, in in my work with organizations, I, what you're saying is absolutely true. If it's ever going to work, that's it's it's absolutely has to be integrated. It's it's a lens you look through for making decisions versus a an activity. So love that, love that, um, John. Yeah, and I can kind of you know to on the uh, DEI and I from uh, Excel Energy's perspective, you know, that's been a huge focus for our company for a number of years now. Um, I know we actually have a specific department internally, you know, on diversity and inclusion. Um, you know, we've been a leader and, and won numerous awards over the years. So it's definitely a, a huge part of the culture at Excel Energy. You know, we, um, you know, have, do a great job internally of promoting that. Um, hopefully externally we promote that very well as, um, as, as well as we do uh, internally, um, you know, we have specific events geared toward, you know, some uh, diversity and, and equity and, and inclusion type stuff that might go on that, you know, people can go and attend, um, you know, we'll sponsor speakers to come in based on specific things. So uh, huge focus at Excel and kind of shifting to the camaraderie, I would say, you know, over the, the pandemic, it definitely, you know, is harder, um, you know, we may be, you know, being a larger company, it's not as easy for us to maybe do some of the other things that uh, some of the other uh, companies do. But within specific departments, you know, we figure out ways how to, you know, try to, you know, during the uh, the work week, maybe set aside a, a Thursday afternoon to, you know, whether or not it was a, a Teams meeting that we just get together and kind of just chat about, you know, what's going on outside of work and, you um, just kind of unstructured stuff, um, nothing too structured, but we did try to do some of that, but definitely is, is more difficult in the, uh, the hybrid uh, remote work environment. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat here because we do want to leave some time for questions and I've only uh, seen one question which I've already shared in there. So just a call out to participants that um, we've got about eight minutes left or so uh, that if you have questions, we'll just keep talking until I see some questions. So we we make the most out of these folks uh, time and experiences. But if you have questions, please pop them in the chat so we can can uh, try and get those answered in our remaining time here. So um, so one um, one question I'll ask you while we're waiting to see if questions come in is if you could each share maybe a most impactful tip or tool for successfully working in hybrid work environments that, that you've experienced and um, we'll just start with that. An, an effective tip or tool that you have experienced yourself and seen work. Well, I'd just like to call out to the video programs like Zoom and Teams that whenever somebody actually turns on their video so you can see their face, 
that is the most effective way to communicate. That's what you would be doing in the office. And so having that person's face there um, really does add value to the relationship. I have communicated with many people at Shutterfly that don't turn their camera on and you have a sense about their personality and about how you work with them. And then when they do turn their camera on, wow, it completely changes. It's, <laughs> it's fascinating. So I would really encourage everybody to do that. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think of it like people on a, on a Zoom or remote meeting with their camera off is like walking into an in-person meeting with a bag over your head. Like, would you do that? So why do we think it's okay to do that here? Um, that's yeah. And a lot of people point. say, people say things like, well, I haven't showered yet, which is cool. Cause you're remote. That's totally fine. Or my hair looks bad. We don't care because the rest of us are the same way. <laughs> All right. Any other tips or tools? We don't care if you shower, just let us see you. That's one tip. Yeah. yeah I think one, one of the, you know, a, a tip, I guess, um, you know, I sometimes have a hard time remembering as well is just trying to keep the separation between work and life when you're working at home. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of times where, um, you know, you do, you know, the, my, my children might come home and say, hi, how's it going? And, and then you hop back on your computer and the next thing you know, it's seven o'clock at night and you might, you know, just kind of, uh, but it's just being able to, to continue to separate that, that work from life, life balance. Uh, I, see, uh, I don't see any uh, any other questions coming in yet, so um, please put them in the chat if you've got some more questions. Go ahead, Sai, while we're waiting. Yeah, um, so I say, um, so for my current internship, I usually take a separate laptop from the company to college with me. Um, and so speaking to that work-life balance, um, one of the greatest tips that I personally have taken upon myself is to close the laptop and leave it in the car itself. So there's a physical distance between me and the work as well. That way, you know, if I'm, cause sometimes I get really engrossed with what I'm working. And so I'm like, oh man, I don't want to work on homework but I could probably work on this. Um, you know, so for me to, you know, sort of switch off that work mode I sort of put physical distance between me and the device as well. Um, and so I think that's a, great tip that uh, I was given from my uh, mentor as well. Sounds like you have a great mentor. So that physical, actual physical, um, and maybe if you work in the living room that things get shut down and they go to another room or if it's possible to work in another room so you don't have that same energy space in your, in your, um, in your workspace. Any other questions or um, things you'd like to add that we haven't covered that maybe came up for you as we've been talking. Let's see, we have something in the chat here. Thoughts on how to reintroduce people to workplaces as many are returning for the first time. And to whomever wants to answer that. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we're trying to you know, promote within Excel Energy is, you know, from a management perspective or a supervisor or a leader is, you know, as you do have uh, new employees returning to the office, you know, try to be present, you know, for them, um, try to set up, you know, a, a time to, to meet or uh, maybe on that first day back kind of a one-on-one -on -one type thing situation just to do that, that in-person type um, uh, introduction. So, um, but yes, it is definitely a great question and something that we'll actually be uh, encountering here in, a, in the next week or so. I'm curious if a gradual return would be helpful as you think about, you know, two years working solely at home that that happened very quickly without planning, and now people are used to it, and now all in back to the office. I'm wondering if a gradual transition, like. This week we're in so many days, you know, over time to help people make those adjustments if that would be helpful. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. And we've got one minute left. Um, the amount of hours that you spend in quiet at your in your personal space mm -hmm. at home and going back to the office and having other people talk and communicate. Whenever I go, I'm like, ah! 
just like I, it's hard or, to it's hard to even think and be in a meeting so really thinking about how people are transitioning even on an hour by hour basis so maybe even like a couple hours instead of a full eight hour day might help the anxiety for some that that is a great um point we think about you know the commute and all those pieces but what about what about our actual senses going from working you know, being able to control everything about the environment. Well, maybe not always if you're working home with children, but um, but being able to sort of control all of that to all of a sudden not. So think about your senses and your employees' senses and what, what might that experience. Um, I think it might be helpful for employers to really reflect on their own experience and, and then take that out a little bit farther, take that lens out to how might what I'm experiencing, you know, relate to what my employees might be experiencing, even though it won't be the same for everyone. Having some reflection time might help leaders um, um, make those adjustments in, in a little more reflective, thoughtful way.